Hey there, rulers. We are about to do some coverage, streaming the finals of the White Phoenix League event for the day. Just kind of waiting on confirmation on where I'm supposed to go. So let's go pop over into Discord and find out. Okay, interesting. Finals for today is a Gill deck versus a Lefaria deck. Uh, I believe they play Cluster for these events, so it'll be very interesting to see that these two decks are the ones that made it to the end. I'm very excited. Not what I was expecting. Let's jump right in. Just waiting on them to get started here. Go for getting that 16. Mr. Will get an 18. So far, you're going first against Gil Lapis. Very interesting. I imagine that the list for um, let's see here. Trying to pump up the bit rate a little bit. It's being a little slow. Yeah, my bit rate is supposed to be that high. So I guess it'll pump up here just a little bit. If there's any glitches, let us know. Maybe there's some issues on our end. But we're jumping in. Gusting Skies on the first turn. We're going to see that road come down turn one. It would be the ideal. Yep, okay. That's what we expected. Road coming down on turn one here. Pull it up here on the screen so you guys can see it. This sets up really nicely for being able to slow down the Galapas deck as well as being able to get that Stranger to hand pretty early for Faria. Also sets really up nicely for Faria's uh, Regalia trigger so that you can pop something, which is really nice. Black White coming from the Galapas deck. So you can kind of discard maybe or perhaps a turn one World Ender. Yep. Dark Alice's Smile, pretty standard first turn. For darkness based decks, wanted to do that discard stuff. <clears throat> Not too surprised. Ooh, what a hand. I imagine we probably hit the Grand Cross Reincarnation. It's probably the most powerful card here, potentially. Yeah, the Grand Cross makes the most sense. You get the most value off of it. Two modes, plus, you know, having a stranger in hand already sets it up really nicely. Burning the Energized and then play that Yggdrasil. So that we go ahead. It comes into play tapped, um, but he still gets to go search out World Ender, which sets him up nicely. And especially seeing that there is no Regalia on the play of the Faria deck. This means that you're pretty comfortable to play the Yggdrasil, even though it's going to come into play tapped. Just a quick reminder that Yggdrasil does come into play tapped. Gusting Skies and a Light Vapors, so I imagine at this point we're at like perfect will for the Faria deck. Going to the Gilapas turn. Ooh, seeing moon early, that's nice. I imagine we're gonna see World Ender come down here and leaving up the with the moon. Yep. So now here's the question of what are we gonna do with these triggers from Gil Lapis? Is it gonna be call a couple limit breaks? Is it gonna be draw, you know, reveal and then limit break? What are we gonna do? I 
We're gonna limit break at least Blazer. Okay. And did we look at the top three? Okay, yeah. Okay, we looked at the top three. We're picking this distortion. That's a really good card for after we get all of Sauris limit broken. So that means the potential idea of being able to do um, judgment the kill lapis or get limit break on the kill lapis, uh, flip into an all of be able to then start using that spell. Interesting to see it main decked. Blazer coming into play tapped here. A second Yggdrasil. Are we gonna make use of that last floating? Yeah, down comes the uh, the blue wizard, that makes sense. So now this blue wizard can start pinging stuff, which is nice. It can start picking off the um, the Yggdrasil's Oh, and we're just gonna let the floating will vanish. Interesting. Yeah, these this is suddenly very quickly going to go be back in Faria's favor, having now having that Excalibur. So you know we can pop one of the Yggdrasil's. The idea would be potentially maybe pop the Blazer instead. Um, since it's rested but we're just gonna judgment oh okay get a stranger judgment we're going very very aggressive unexpected i would want to maybe control the board state just a little bit better but i think maybe the thought is you don't want to give the skill lapis deck the time twin swords wow okay Twin Sword's probably gonna, I imagine, hit the Blazer. Yeah, that makes the most sense. Um, and then we can use, wow, not even attacking the Yggdrasils with the Blue Wizard. Very conservative gameplay. has another world ender here in hand. I'm really wondering why we didn't try to kill one of these Yggdrasils with the blue wizard when we had the chance. We weren't too much worried about the crack pack because of the road. One second, I gotta, I'll be right back.
Apologies for the delay. I am back. Yep, as I thought, the Faria player was definitely in control there. Going into game two. What? I love you too. So going into game two here, um, you know, thinking about these two different decks, um, my thought would be that Fari would probably have the natural advantage, particularly because of Road. Um, that, that card just sets up a lot, uh, and with Gil losing access to being able to potentially play Sylvia swiftly to put in pressure and, and do spot removal there, Faria gets to just have this kind of incremental value generation, um, spot removing by playing a Regalia, spot removing by... Um, Grand Cross, you just you can get a lot of value out of the cards that just naturally kind of slow Gil down. Um, and if Gil is slow, um, you're in a problem. That being said, there could definitely be something to be said about if the Gil player decides to kind of change his game plan to shift more towards being a control style. Um, like, slow the turns back, don't put a ton of early pressure, force the Faria to extend and then punish, would be my thought. We're just going to slam a turn one blazer before anything else comes down and then move in. Going very aggressive here. Kiki, everybody's favorite. Draw two, put one back on top. Very strong card. Giving Faria that draw power is definitely very helpful because Faria doesn't have a ton of it naturally. Trying to find a card early with a dark summoning. Is that card the black moon ray, maybe? Maybe. Getting a black moon ray could definitely be very good for this matchup here. Like getting this early pressure with a searched up black moon ray. 
like Fari is not gonna be able to provide any kind of discard as far as I know. So if Faria flips and then there's a Black Moonberry rating for her, that's a really, really bad spot. Um, that potentially gives Gil a really big opportunity to be able to jump in. Another Kiki coming in here. Followed by Definitely need to probably try and see another limit break come down here. If we can. Ooh, Dark Storm. I'm not sure how I feel about the Dark Storm here. Obviously, we're probably trying to hit the Regalia, but it's a 1 in 6 chance. It's not super high. Um, and you know that if you're the, the Tharia player, you're not going to like actively choose to discard. Parry. Interesting. Not a card I would have expected to see here. Another Dark Summoning. We're burning through these Dark Summonings really quick. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Maybe a second Dark Storm, I guess. I still think that if I still think that we're in a position where we need to hold up Black Moon Ray instead of being this aggressive. Like I don't. I mean, this is helpful, I guess, Dark Alice's smile to be able to rip the Regalia. But if there's two Regalia here, like we're in in trouble. <laughs> um. Or if there's another, even if there's another Yggdrasil, like we're in trouble. Yep, two Regalia. That's exactly what I was talking about. Like, this is not a good spot. I much would have rather said, like, okay, cool. If you want to play Regalia, that's fine. I'm just going to, like, murder your um, your Faria before you even have a chance to do anything. Especially since with going into this much will, um, having a Regalia at all, plus Yggdrasil on board. I mean, I guess you could swing your Blazer into the Yggdrasil, but... We're just going to block with Kiki. And then, like, we don't have a way to make Black Moon Ray unchaseable. Um, so, like, we're going to be able to give Faria Eternal uh, with her God Art. Um, I just, I don't think that there was enough there, you know, because here's the other thing, too, is we can actually play, we could do... Um, Yggdrasil plus Gusting Skies for Wings. Use Wings to have free judgment. And then do Wings of the Archangel plus our Blue Stone here to cast Awakening of the Sacred Queen. So this helps a little. We still have Energize. So like we can still do this exact same play. We have to sacrifice the Blazer. Fari's going to take 12. That's fine. Um, But like now... Faria can kind of play out her entire hand. Um, and Gil Lapis is pretty low. So, like, the idea being here... Why did we burn Energize? Are we... Really? I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with doing a parry to stop the 12 there. Um, my thought would have been we burn Energize and green, play um, Wings... We use Wings and the other one to play Awakening of the Sacred Queen. That gets us an Excalibur. That lets us Judgment for free. With Judgment, we have two will open to be able to do God Art. Like, I don't, I don't think I agree with this at all. I 
I mean, I still think that Faria is definitely an advantage here, but this is like really suboptimal play, in my opinion. Like we paid, we paid three will to put a Yggdrasil and Excalibur on board when we could have paid three will to put a little a Wings of the Archangel and an Excalibur and a Stranger and a Faria into field. Like, no, I don't, I don't agree with this play line. just taking a lot of what it could have had and just not trying to capitalize it because even in that situation right so like even if we flip into faria and he plays moonray unchaseable right that cost him two he's left with two cards in hand we've still put two strangers into the field like and, and then we're still sitting pretty with all of this extra will that we can make use of and push that stranger pressure i just this feels like we're giving gillap is way too much time when we could have been pushing in. Yup, in comes Lenneth. Might as well float the will. We're probably going to kill. She's got barrier from resonator. So we're probably going to go ahead and kill her with sacred wave plane here. Again, to turn. So like that was three. That was like three will pop a thing. Like. Alasaurus, but he's not limit broken. So he's just a dude. I mean, my hope is that we just do exactly what I said before this following turn, right? Like, we just do Wings of the Archangel into a flip, into Awakening of the Sacred. Like, we just pressure out that way. Hitting the Loki off of the Faria flip is a blessing and a curse. Wow, we didn't even do the play to get both? Like, I can't think of a reason why you don't want to just have both Awakening of the Sacred Queen, or both Excalibur and Wings of the Archangel on field. It's super weird to me. Well, if we're 
Yeah, that's really unfortunate. Like our only grab there is Lenneth, which feels really bad because it's just not getting a lot of value off of it here. And even if he does play the Lenneth, like he has to pay three for the Lenneth. He hasn't limit broken Galapis. Even if he pays three for Lenneth here, we just float the will, Awakening of the Sacred Queen, get our Excalibur back anyway. Like, woof. Yeah, that's 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 unfortunate. Because we don't even have a way to like judgment this Gil Lapis this turn. Destroy all strangers, I guess. You got rid of the Loki, sure. Yeah. Varya just has all the advantage here. Like, if Black Moon Ray hasn't already Yeah, okay. Is the last card Black Moon Ray? Are we finally... Nope, it's just an Alistaris. Oh my gosh. The fact that we didn't Dark Summoning a Black Moon Ray is very confusing to me. When we knew we were playing against a Faria deck. Like... I don't understand why we didn't. When we played three Black Moon um, Dark Summonings... That we didn't have some way. We're sitting on, yeah, so we used God Art, which seems weird to me. Um, I don't really know why we got arted there just to gain life. And you already have so much, I would have tried to save it. There's some... Very interesting proactive plays that I wasn't expecting. If you like what we're doing here while we kind of wait, if you like... Oh, wow. Blue Wizard to stop the Yggdrasil. Unfortunate. That's pretty much GG uh, at this point. There's nothing really to Gil Lapis. I mean, a Gil Lapis slip gets him a minion limit broken, but that's it. Oh, wait, does he even do that? Um, I think he does. Uh, if you like what we're doing and you want to consider supporting us, you can click that join button down below. Join the channel as a member. Get you access to all kinds of cool perks, including chat bubble or like custom force of will emotes, name badges, and all kinds of cool stuff. I know that there are some people who are watching us from overseas. We're grateful to have you here. But, you know, if you want to support a, a content creator from here in the United States, we'd love that support. Otherwise, we just hope you're enjoying the video. So yeah, Gil Lap is here, just a 12-12. We get a minion. 
What minion are we grabbing here? Sylvia? Even that feels pretty bad. Doesn't, I mean, doesn't feel super great. This is the reason why I'm like, I don't know why we burned God Art. Just to kill something we were already killing. Because now we don't have a defensive God Art. Yeah, so like... With this setup, now, unless there's spot removal... Um... We get to suicide, su suicide Sylvia into the Faria, shooting the blue wizard, suicide Alasaurus into the Faria to kill it, um, sacrifice the Percival to be able to then put it back on top of our deck to play the Sylvia, replay the Sylvia next turn. Oof, second intimidation. Just prevent that damage anyway. So like this port state is something, sure, but none of this stuff flies. Oh sorry. Guild does get flying at least. But now we have Gil on top deck mode when he's not even on his ruler side. Um, like in my position, I think we're going to go ahead and precision kill the Gilapis, um, shooting whatever's in the way. Although there might be cause to say we're just going to ignore the Gilapis. because we don't want him being able to play Regalia and get more advantage off of it. Kind of like a Melgus situation. Huh. Things to consider. Oof, we got a road. That's just such a nail in the coffin. Yep. Far is going after Gilapis, saying, look, get your other guy out of the way. I don't care if you get the advantage. I don't want you to suddenly, you know, I'm not worried about you getting more regalia. I imagine this Faria hand is just filled to the brim with spot removal at this point. Now don't get me wrong, you know, this Sylvia can pump up to be two will when we're hitting for 16 on the Faria. So like this Sylvia does have ways to be able to put pressure on this Faria, but like intimidations neutralize that. We have spot removal as he moves into combat. That eliminates this problem. I mean, no, we've got a stranger in there. I, yeah, I just keep coming back to the fact that... Okay. Just get to choose a limit break here for one. I mean, this is the reason why I don't like distortion very much. That's the other thing, too, is I don't really know, you know, thinking about it, I don't really know why we played the, uh, why we swung at the Gilapis when he had it imperishable, too. That's a big, big question mark, too. 
Now he just gets another body. Now he has access to the god art. And now, you know, end of the world is the thing. Grab the Lenneth. We're just immediately god arting. No, we're pumping up the Sylvia to try to kill the Faria. Okay, so if he's taking the damage, why is the Faria still alive? Okay, there it is. Now it's dead. What are we doing here now that Faria's on this side? Awakening of the Winged Lord. Hitting another Excalibur to draw a card and pop arrested. The thing is, though, even in this situation, like, Percival the Holy Grail is actually doing a lot of work just by sitting there. Because if we pop one of these, like, Sylvia or Lenneth, we can just make our draw for turn that card again, which is really, really good. And I think at this point, like, there's even a world where you go... Like if, so say for instance, we kill the Sylvia, you tap to try to pop the Percival in response, sack the Percival to put the Sylvia back on top of your deck, get the God art regeneration, and then still have the Sylvia, right? Like you didn't really even lose anything. So Guilford definitely having a way back this game for sure. More than so than I thought. Wow, we whiffed on the Awakening. That's most unfortunate. Like, I think if... I mean, yes, Guilford is definitely clawing his way back this game, and I think he's in a pretty good spot. I, don't, I think we wouldn't have even been this far if we had just searched for a Black Moon Ray. Um, because then we, like, Faria would have been dead a long time ago. And we wouldn't have even lost that earlier Lenneth to the block. Um, we wouldn't have lost the Get Lapis the first time. Holy Nova? Oh. Sure, let's just board wipe. Um, what do we have in Grave? I think you're okay with this. I think you do banish the personal to put the Lenneth back on top of your deck, though. Because you also don't care about the fact that Galapas is dead. That was an expensive board wipe. Huh. We're just thinking that our top decks are gonna be better. What are we? What are we doing here? Hmm. 
Yeah, this is the finals of the White Phoenix tournament. CCG. This is the finals of the White Phoenix event. If, if Mr. Will can find, wow, if Mr. Will can find his way to a, I know we, we know he has a stranger in hand, right? So if Mr. Will can find his way to a grand cross, we're in a little bit better shape. How did we, oh yes. Okay. We did end up using the linen, the, yeah. I don't know how many players were in it. I can ask. We will almost be certainly pushing this match to a game three at this point. Yeah, there's that Grand Cross, so that helps a lot. This lets us, the problem is he can sacrifice one of the Resonators um, before, so there's not much option choosing to banish a non-J Ruler, non-Magic Zone entity, right? So like doing the Enter Effect and getting a Regalia makes the most sense. Um, if we have a second Grand Cross here, we're in a much better spot because we can steal Imperishable off the Gill. Um, so like, if we have another Grand Cross here, we're in a really, really good spot. We just gotta find it. We still got this life total lead. What did we top deck here? Okay. So we've got a God's Art. That minus four, minus four is applied. Oh, that's true. He doesn't. He has to activate Lapis first because he's already used God Art once. He didn't recharge it. That's very, very true. He used it once but never recharged it. So we gotta get a Resonator on board first. Oof. So swinging for 20. I mean, three turn clock, right? Might as well. Oh, 
Blue wizard before recovery. Interesting. Or maybe at the end of the end of Guilford's turn so that we can start swinging in for six, I guess. Second road, get another stranger. Like, what are the other strangers that we're sitting on? Wish I could see. Yep. Put that pressure in. Take six. So now we have the ability to recharge the Gil Lapis and do God Art. But we're sitting on a lot of cards on the side of Faria. Dark Alice's Smile. See, this would be the moment to cast Grand Cross Reincarnation if you have it. Force the sacrifice of an entity so that gets rid of a world ender, thus meaning that Faria is. Oof, okay. Those are not great cards. Hmm. Yep. I think you just swig. I think you just swing, push lethal. I mean, try and draw into something. to find out what this other card is we still don't have god art though oh okay we weren't swinging we were trying to pop the blue wizard so that we could recharge god art okay I suppose I don't really know why we did that I would have pushed pressure seeing seeing that hand with what it was I would have just swung in for 20 um, taking mr. will down to 16 or uh, 17 because like nothing in that hand was threatening Gil Lapis um, Nine, eight, eight, nine lols. This is finals of today's event, as far as I know. I know they do like a weekly event, a weekly tournament, and so we're streaming the finals of this week's event. Swing six, or sorry, two, I guess. Swing two. Laser coming into play tapped. What is this last card in his hand? Swinging in for set 20. Or trying to blow up a blue wizard to recharge Goddard again. Yep. 
Wait, do we? Yeah, okay. I don't. I don't know why we're doing that. Maybe just to set up an unwinnable board state for Faria, because we know that Faria can't flip. But like, why aren't you just winning the game? Uh, this is cluster format as far as I know, Agent Frederick. Yeah, so like, we could have just pushed lethal. <laughs> Instead we spent two turns trying to set up god arts that are now gone. So like, I don't know why we weren't just pushing 20 damage every turn. Because Intimidation doesn't hit J-Rulers, just hits Resonators. So just like, push 20. Push 20 in the air, like, unblockable in a sense. Sure, Darkstorm, let's rip two crit that in sand. Second world ender. Draw two cards. What other what other got what other limit breaks do you need? Draw two cards. Yeah. Second Dark Storm. If we don't start just pushing damage. Okay, there we go. Mr. Will concedes. We push to game three. Okay. Here we go. I was very confused as to why we were not just already over with that game. Going to game three. this break again appreciate you guys tuning in if you like what we're doing and want to consider supporting us you can click that join button down below get you access to being able to do the emotes like i'll put some in the chat right now so we got well, chip. like our little hanzo emote and all kinds of other ones that we're getting the more members we get the more emotes we have currently we're working our way up to a kiki emote we're looking for 10 new people to join the channel as members. Support us financially and we can get that new emote unlocked. Jumping right on here with a Dark Alice's smile. What are we ripping out of the hand here? Wow, that is a hand. I actually think we hit road, to be perfectly honest. Because we're not too worried about it. the other cards right now. Uh, I think road is the clear choice. It's either road or... Um, Grand Cross, but I think Road is the choice. Raid to stick. Welcome. Thank you. You may pick up your syllabus in the office and report to class. Thank you for joining us here as a member on Ruler School.
We're just doing demo limit break here. We're just doing Blazer Gilapis for the limit break. Blazer Lenneth. Interesting that we would do Blazer Lenneth. Maybe just for the dark summonings. There's a Blazer. Is there a second one? Is there a dark summoning? Yeah, okay. Blazer dark summoning. So again, this is a situation where like I think I just think you grab I just think you grab Moonray, right? Like it having Moonray against a Faria deck is good. <laughs> um, like we saw how quickly that game turned in Guilford's favor the second that Faria died. So like we're burning Energize here just to try to draw a card because this hand is so bad. Oof, can't even Awakening of the Wicked Lord. Did we hit an X Excal? Cool, we got the Excal at least. Lapis Dark Storm right out the gate. Wow, not even gonna do the Grand Cross here. That would be we Grand Cross in response to the Dark Storm, just to make be able to make use of it. Oof! So many Grand Crosses. I think we take, giving the option of here, like the fact that we haven't Grand Crossed, I think you take the Blue Wizard. Permanently shut, I mean, like you just shut off those two cards in hands. You know that like, why did we take the Waning of the Winged Lord? Why did we not take the Blue Wizard? I don't understand. <laughs> like, taking the Blue Wizard essentially makes it minus three. <laughs> Because you shut off the two Grand Crosses. You can't cast Grand Cross unless you have a Stranger to reveal. And, like, we knew that we weren't, like, we know there's no other way to get a Stranger in hand there. He has to, like, either top deck something or hit, um, something like this. You know, he'd have to hit something like that. But even then, like, ugh. Please be holding Black Moon Ray in hand to like hard punish this flip. Like in response to enter effect, unchaseable Black Moon Ray. Like just shoot it. I'm so confused. Why we didn't have moon? Are we just not playing it? Like, I mean, I guess this works too, but it doesn't even kill the Faria. Cause she's a 14, 14. So even though we're sacking it, right? Like we can burn his face for 12, I suppose. But like we don't have a limit broken Gilapis. He's got the we know he has the parry to stop the damage. And he gets to draw a card. Like why did we limit Ugh. Why did we not just go grab a Moonray? Was Moonray banned for this event? I have to ask.
like we're flipping an un unlimit broken Galapas to get an Allosaurus. Did we have did we have the Allosaurus spell two times? Like even an uh, a chaseable Black Moon Ray at this point is good. Yeah, Lenith. Sacrificing the. How are we playing the Elisaurus? You don't have the will to cast it. Did he still have coin? No, because Faria had coin. Oh, right. Forgot that Alasaurus only costs one if he's limit broken. But I still I still don't understand. Like we had Dark Summoning. Why didn't we just grab a Black Moon Ray so that this Faria just isn't a problem? Like I guess this sets this up for like telling the Faria swing or call stone at your own risk. Because you're not gonna get it. Regalia effects, and so the thought is we can't outrace him. Just like minimize the value. And the idea of playing all these resonators on board is to try to minimize the strength of Grand Cross. Like more options to be able to sacrifice. Why even block here? Why even block? There's no point in blocking. Just take the 10. Okay, Black Moon Beam was Black Moon Ray was not banned in this tournament. So we killed the, I mean, like we were already planning on killing the Faria. Swinging in for pressure. It's a lot of Allosauruses, that's for sure. So like in that situation, I don't even know if I would have swung at the Faria because of the potential lack of ability to get new strangers because we have two Grand Crosses in hand, right? So if this Faria manages to get a Loki to hand, 
than like we're in trouble then like we have a little bit more to deal with whereas opposed to right now like we're just gonna keep swinging for a bunch of damage every single turn Percival coming into play second blue wizard doesn't really matter Percival still puts us in a, a ton of work being able to replenish our strangers back to hand Six. Trade. Six and then six. Go for just saying, I don't need to limit Brook and get Lapis. All I need is you to not have a Faria. Mr. Will certainly looking for something here. A Grand Cross into a Loki would be pretty good. A Grand Cross. Yep, we got Grand Cross. We got Blue Wizard probably revealed. the reveal yep twin swords we're just doing modes to dig get stuff back Are there any strangers in graveyard i mean we've got a blue wizard I think Blue Wizard back isn't terrible, but we have one in hand already, so it's like, meh. Well, I guess we... Got a Regalia. What did we do with that? What was the second action of the Grand Cross? Search for a regalia. Do we attempt to put something back on top of the deck? I gotta confirm what was the second action. Got the swordsman back from grave. Okay. I didn't know the swordsman was in grave. Okay. Oh, okay. He just didn't, like, reveal the blue wizard. So he revealed the blue wizard that was already revealed to get twin swords back to get a regalia. Okay, that makes sense. Now we get any stranger we want, any you know guy we want. It'd be our, essentially our top deck. I don't know why we're playing this Lenneth so proactively. Like I think you swing first. I think you swing with a flying gill for twelve. comment on this last time I did one of the white Phoenix events where the amount of like proactive plays like the play style is different than people in America like in that situation I wouldn't think to play that Lenneth right now at all I would just say like let's push 12 first see what you have um, before I do anything else especially since he doesn't have a blocker like there's no blocker here so the idea is like push 12 push 
Mr. Will down to four and then make a choice. Big red boy. Now we just need some life gain or a flyer to try to deal with the skill lapis. And see, this is what I'm talking about. Like, I don't. We, we knew there was a blue wizard there. So, like, I don't really know why we even played the Lennis. Like, it wasn't going to resolve. It wasn't going to get its value because it was coming into play tapped. Why didn't we just keep it in hand until later? And cross. Yeah, wolf. This is. This is rough. We're gonna sacrifice a bunch here. And just trading in the uh, trading in the twin swords kills the Galapis. I mean, woof, Galapis. No way to flip again. See, the, yeah, I don't know. If we had removed that first twin, you know, the question, like, how far back can you go, right? Like, if we had removed that first twin swords, or sorry, that first blue wizard, or if we had hit one of those grand crosses or something, like, would we have had more time? The blue wizard ended up being really important to be able to turn on the grand crosses. We were given an opportunity to be able to take it away. Pass that one. Wow, and two flutes. So now we're ramping. Slash getting additional damage. What do we have here? What is the top deck? We know he plays End of the World. That Alasaurus ain't doing nothing. <laughs> Oof. Twin Swords put the. Oh, that's GG. That's GG. We time walked in. We get to put extra counters on stuff with the, the flute. counters on you know one on blue wizard one on the other blue wizard so that's six seven eight fifteen twenty two you need to find two damage from somewhere give everybody yeah that'll do it <laughs> give everybody plus four plus four wow Faria closing it out 
Those are the games. So Mr. Will Stroke in game three. Pulling it out thanks to the tiny res tiny tiny beats. Taking your qualifier for this time. Definitely a lot of back and forth. Like I said, it's certainly a lot more of a like a proactive play lines than I think I've seen and very interesting choices in regards to the discards and stuff. Um, and it could just be, you know, the players, it could be adapting to the meta, it could be just the play style of the people from, you know, people in different countries play different. But that was it for us for today. Thanks to the White Phoenix crew for allowing us to get the chance to stream this event. Hope you guys liked it. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Maybe tune back into some of our other uh, videos throughout the week. Later today, we'll have a deck profile for a Celesta treasures list. And uh, as always, if you like what we did, consider clicking that join button down below. And consider us supporting us financially. You get access to all kinds of cool perks. Minimum is $2, and it gets you access to pretty much everything um in terms of just visual perks as well as like being able to access the chats for our gp streams and everything else but rather regardless of that hope you enjoyed it and until next time this is dmo73 saying class dismissed